Okay, everyone, thanks for joining and attending our NX uh, webinar here with Sterling Logan and 3D Logics. My name is Taylor Saul with Applied CAX. Uh, I'll just give you a brief background on who Applied is and uh, hand it over to Sterling since this is a relatively short webinar. Uh, Applied CAX is a bar uh, associated with Siemens located in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we have over 30 uh, engineers on staff. We have our own NX CAM uh, machine shop with uh, five axis uh, capabilities. And we also have a 3D printing uh, facility as well. Uh, we partnered with Sterling Logan about a year or so ago. And Sterling has been a, a fantastic resource in the Portland area. Um, we're hosting two webinars uh, a, a quarter for either NXCAD or NXCAM. I'll be following up with everyone that signed up today with a recording. So if you have any questions and you'd like to talk more about either uh, the capabilities of generative design in NX, uh, latticing, or uh, potentially becoming a partner with Applied or Sterling Logan, um, you'll have my contact information. And with that, Sterling, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Taylor, and thank you, Applied CAX, for the opportunity to uh, do this webinar. So my name is Sterling Logan. I am the owner engineer at 3D Logics. Uh, 3D Logics was started just last year in 2017, so we are relatively new. Uh, my background uh, comes from the automotive industry, where I spent eight years previously. Uh, I worked as a design engineer. Um, and worked with uh, tier one suppliers like Toyota and Subaru and uh, Kia, Hyundai, and, and Dymo Trucks North America. Uh, I have 12 plus years of NX user experience. Uh, my first um, exposure to uh, the software was in college, and it was back then it was Unigraphics 2.0. So it's come a long way since then. Um, I enjoy outdoors, uh, mountain biking, golf, skiing, and pretty much any sport you can think of. Um, I've actually gone skiing uh, with Taylor before, and I can vouch that he is a solid skier. Um, I'm also a 3D printing enthusiast and just excited to be able to share some information about 3D printing and additive manufacturing with you today. So moving along, the topics that we're going to discuss in this webinar, we're going to address what additive manufacturing is what we do at 3D Logics. We're going to have an overview of uh, 3D printing technologies that are out there existing right now. We'll talk a little bit about the state of 3D printing and additive manufacturing markets and the opportunities that are that are there. Um, and then we're going to get into some of the meat and potatoes that a lot of you are on here for, which is the Siemens NX additive manufacturing tools, specifically the design for additive manufacturing um, which is um, DFAM is the term that uh, they like to use for that. Um, and then lightweighting with lattice structures and generative design and topology optimization. And lastly, we'll talk about just a few current applications that we work on here at 3D Logics and other companies are working on for additive manufacturing. So very first question, what is additive manufacturing? I think most people have heard of it by now. They know what it is. Um, it's also known as 3D printing, and it refers to the process used to create three-dimensional parts where layers of material are formed with a variety of techniques and methods to create an object. And the objects can be of almost any shape or geometry as defined in a 3D model, although there are some limitations depending upon uh, what 3D printing technology you're using. Uh, this slide I, I grabbed from 3D Hubs. They did a, such a great job of putting together all of these uh, 3D printing technologies. Um, so you can see that there's really kind of seven, uh, seven main technologies out there. You have from left to right, you have the VAT photopolymerization, then material extrusion, material jetting, binder jetting, powder bed fusion, direct energy deposition, and sheet lamination. And underneath all of these, there's another level of kind of different technologies in each one and how they're being used. 
Specifically, Applied CAX has the carbon 3D printing machine in-house at their facility, um, which is a really fantastic machine. I wish I had one too. Uh, I always tell people if I could have one of every 3D printing machine, that would be a dream come true to me. So maybe when I uh, win the lottery someday, I'll be able to do that. But for now, 3D Logix is focusing on the powder bed fusion technology and specifically, we have SLS for plastics, for nylon plastics. Um, SLS stands for selective laser sintering. And DMLS, or SLM, um, which is selective laser melting for metal materials. But this is just to give you a broad view of that there are a lot of 3D printing technologies out there, and they all have kind of like their own advantages and areas where they work really well. I don't like to say that they have disadvantages. I, I like to say that they all have their advantages and it's just a matter of finding which one works best for your product or process. Uh, so what we do at 3D Logix, we are the first 3D printing service bureau in Portland, um, the Portland metro area that has both a plastic and metal added manufacturing in one facility. We also do 3D scanning, reverse engineering. Of course, we do CAD design. Uh, using NX. Uh, we also have design for additive manufacturing, DFAM, and that's kind of where we take your part and we figure out if it can be made additively, if it can be 3D printed, and what might need to change to do that. And then we offer generative design and part optimization um, using NX and the, the plugins or the add ins that they have through Materialize and Frustum to do generative design and part optimization. On the SLS side, um, SLS goes back a long ways and it's one of the earlier 3D printing technologies all the way back to 1989. And we get very strong, flexible, durable nylon parts. It's an excellent prototyping tool, but it's also good for small batch manufacturing. On our machine currently, um, as I speak, we have, uh, we're running 66 parts for a customer, for large bracket pieces that are gonna be used um, not just for prototyping, but for end use as well. Um, we, there are some uh, things to think about, like minimum thicknesses and details and clearances. We can do interlocking parts with SLS. That's one of the main features of the SLS technology. Um, and we don't have to have any support structures when we build a part um, in the powder bed. Um, our current machine has a volume size of 200 by 250 by 330 millimeters. So we can get a pretty decent size out of that. On the metal side, um, direct metal laser sintering, I always like to remind people that we get real metal parts. Probably the first thing that people always ask us when we say we're printing in metal is, oh, is it really metal? And it's like, yes, it is metal. We can make real metal parts with over 99% density. Um, SpaceX, Blue Origin, uh, all of the kind of aerospace companies that have critical components, they're printing them on EOS machines and these are going on rocket engines that uh, are critical components for these parts. And so, yes, we are making real metal parts that are functional. So 3D printing for additive manufacturing. Uh, I like to show people this uh, Gartner hype cycle and the technology ad adoption life cycle to kind of show people where we're at. In the beginning, you know, 3D printing, everyone thinks, oh, 3D printing comes out. We can do anything. We can make anything. And then it goes through this kind of trough of disillusionment, like, oh, well, we can't make everything. And then we start to get on this slope of alignment, alignment, enlightenment, and then a plateau of, of productivity um, where we're starting to learn how we can use that technology. And I kind of have a graphic of this where uh, it starts off and you're like, wow, we can 3D print anything. I can, and then you kind of go through this trough of disillusionment. It's like, well, I can't do quite everything. But then you get to a stage where you have this slope of enlightenment and then a plateau of productivity, which is where we find a lot of industries now, especially aerospace, medical, and automotive, where they're finding this slope of enlightenment and this plateau of productivity. I threw this picture in here just to show people, wow, we have really come a long way from, I think this is on uh, the bottom right, it's 1946. Uh, but it shows you the shops of the past, and uh, we have really, we've really come a long way from here. I also like to show people this picture where 
some people are a little bit hesitant to adopt 3D printing right now. Um, this is a picture of New York in 1900. And so you can see we have one car there and everything else is horse-drawn carriages. And so in the beginning, disruption can be very small. And we've definitely seen that with 3D printing. But it doesn't take a very long time. Fast forward to 1913. And now here's a picture of New York City. And you can't find the, it's hard to find where the horse-drawn carriage is. There's only one or two in this entire picture. And the cars have taken over. And so what you find now is there's opportunities for new products. And then you have niche markets for the old products like the horse-drawn carriages. And that's where 3D printing is going. Is there's all these new opportunities opening up. And it's just a matter of figuring out what those opportunities are and how you can how you can leverage those for your business. And again, it's like this digital wave that's coming at you. We have big data, 3D printing, uh, social media, APIs, and some people are just in their boat and it's business as usual and no big deal and they don't see this wave coming. But that's why we're doing this webinar and that's why we try to get the word out to let people know, hey, this is coming and it has real implications for the future. Uh, like this slide says here, additive manufacturing unlocks the next frontier of possibility. But it takes a, a shift in your mind you have to transform your thinking from conventional of how you used to be able to make things or had to make things to how you can additively make something. And when you reimagine the products, you're able to reduce weight and material. Um, you don't need as many personnel uh, or actually I should say you could personalize your, your parts. You can make them custom. Um, you can expand the performance of the part. In this case, for this one, you see there's many parts put into one, and all of the areas on the, on the original part that were bolted together, those are areas that could potentially fail. And when you go to an additively manufactured part, you can take away those failure areas. You can also retool manufacturing. Um, you can add complexity to your parts for no additional cost, but you can also reduce steps, setups, and tooling. And it allows you to kind of rethink your business model to accelerate innovation, um, thinking digitally and not physically. So the impact of additive design to production processes, um, NX um, and Siemens has end-to-end -end support for design, optimizing, and producing parts additively within the NX environment. And Siemens is really leading the way in development of next generation software and processes to allow this shift to happen. And you can kind of see here the process from left to right where you can lightweight and optimize and you can use uh, convergent modeling to then change parts right in the model. Um, then you can validate, know what the design rules are for your 3D printing, what the wall thicknesses are, what the overhang angles are, if your part would even fit in a specific 3D printing volume. And then from there, you can do performance optimization validation. And then right in Siemens NX, you can actually build supports for your part and export it out to the 3D printing machine all in one, uh, one program. So the, the global market for 3D printing and the potential is pretty massive. If you look at global manufacturing as a whole, it's $12 trillion in the industry and right now 3d printing is only accounting for um, two and a half billion dollars and so even if we just take one percent even if it grows just one percent of of the global manufacturing market it's a it's a huge uh, huge shift so right now the uh, additive manufacturing market size is estimated in 2021 to be 26.5 billion is about that 1% level and 20 to 25% is projected to be metal. So massive growth is estimated um, in the 3D printing field. As we look at design for additive manufacturing, the traditional versus the new ways, uh, traditionally we would design, prepare and make a part. And now we can do things almost entirely digitally where we're scanning, simulating, modifying and just printing a part. Um, also optimizing a part to print. So you can design it and then optimize it, validate it using simulation tools, and then send it to 
uh, the 3D printing setup or machining, however you're going to make the part. So NX uh, gives you a lot of tools to reimagine your products. Uh, the main tools we're going to talk about here in this webinar are design with convergent modeling, uh, generative design using topology optimization, uh, lattice structures, and design rules for manufacturability. So the first one we'll talk about is convergent modeling technology. This is uh, a really powerful tool that NX um, has embedded into it. It allows you to work directly with facet surfaces and solids, um, which is kind of revolutionary. Nobody else is doing this, allowing you to have solid bodies and facet bodies and be making changes um, to both of those interactively together. Um, previously, what we would have to do is we would have to design something and then take it into a separate software program, make changes, then bring it back over to NX, and it was just time consuming. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and uh, eliminates the need for reverse engineering in a lot of cases. You don't have to do surfacing on scan data. You can just use the STL data as a convergent body itself. The next is topology optimization. Um, you can do all of these operations, again, natively inside of NX CAD environment. You can test multiple load cases, and the optimized model can then be refined with convergent modeling. So when you make a topology op optimized model, uh, what's happening is it turns it into a convergent model, basically an STL model. And then right in NX, you can modify that convergent body, that STL faceted body, without having to go back and you know, to your original design, make changes, and then do another um, topology optimization to it. So you can do the topology optimization, make changes right in NX, and validate the part without having to go back and forth. The other great tool that is being used is lattice structures. And so this is lightweight components for structural integrity. And again, uh, Siemens has taken this and has put it right into NX to have integrated lattice structure development, which is really powerful. Again, previously what I would have to do is I would have to design a part, figure out where I want the lattice, bring it over to a separate software, put the lattice thing in, and then bring it back over into NX. Well, Siemens saw that this was a pain, so they in integrated it directly into the NX environment. And so you can have these complex geometry represented as facets. And so what you see in this picture here, you'd have your solid body, and then those um, lattice structures are actually um, convergent bodies or STL faceted bodies. So the current additive manufacturing workflow is kind of what I've been describing as we've been going through this webinar so far, and that is you start with one design software and then you're going to another one and then you're going kind of going back and forth and it's a bit of a cycle and then after you get done with that you send your part to the manufacturing software which would be like the 3d printing company software in our case like eos and then from there we send it to uh, the eos machine or the 3d printer so what siemens has done is they've integrated everything into one package so NX, Siemens NX has uh, collaborated with EOS and many other 3D printing manufacturers to allow you to do your design right in CAD, prepare it in CAD, and then send it directly to the 3D printing machine. Um, so this shows uh, what the common workflow typically would be like, as I was describing. For topology optimized parts, you're going to analyze it, you're going to optimize it, and then you're going to go back and redesign it and refine it. And for lightweight structures, for latticing, you have to export the geometry that you want to lattice for, put it into the latticing software, do the lattice, import that back in, and then trim and unite that into your part. Well, with Siemens NX, we have a single environment now. So we, we can, on the topology optimized parts, optimize them, and then just automatically refine them without redesigning. Um, for lattice structures, uh, we don't have to export what we want to be lattice. We just do the lattice right in NX. We don't have to import anything, and we just trim and unite directly in NX. So it's very streamlined, streamlined and optimized um, a setup. 
So now we're going to get in some of the meat potatoes. You can see um, some of the uh, latticing features within NX. So uh, when you select latticing, there's a lot of different options that you can um, play around with. In this particular example, this is a conformal graph, so it's using a surface, and it's going to map the lattice structure onto the surface. Now, some of these procedures are a little um, kind of computer intensive. They take a little bit of time. But here you see now we have a lattice structure. And initially to me, this might look like um, maybe it's a little bit on the light end. Maybe it needs a little bit more latticing. So we can go in and we can make some changes to that lattice structure. Um, we can, you know, change the spacing on it and we can also um, layer it. So there's a lot of options here. So the next thing you'll see is we're going to go in and in this example, uh, we'll take the part and we'll, uh, we'll go back into the lattice feature. And we're going to change maybe the edge length. Um, we could make the edge length a little bit smaller to keep the lattice structure tighter together. And then we can make the offset a little bit smaller and add a layer. So now we're going to be layering the um, latticing structure. And then boom, here you go. So now you see it's a much dense, much more dense, much tighter lattice for this particular application. And we have a two layer thick lattice structure. And there are multiple different types of, of lattices that you can work with, many different types. Um, and NX kind of gives you pointers on which ones might work best for certain circumstances. Here's a, another application. Um, uh, the medical field is a huge industry for uh, 3D printing and additive manufacturing and especially latticing structures. One of the reasons they like latticing structures so much is uh, you can um, have what you call osteointegration um, to promote bone growth um, in a patient. Now, in this particular one, someone had a fracture to their skull. So you can have a patient-specific scan, a CT scan. You can use that data to create the area that needs to be um, uh, the surgical implant that needs to be created. And then we can go in and we can uh, create this lattice structure um, on the part and then 3D print this part specifically for this patient. And then they'll have this perfect part that fits perfectly with their skull, matches everything, and also has the lattice structuring in there to promote that osseo integration, that, that really important bone growth. So it just becomes part of your own body. Uh, in this example here, uh, this one is uh, a, little, uh, a little bit longer. We're gonna, I'm gonna skip through this one a little bit just because the example takes a little bit of time to get going. So this is the topology optimization um, tool. Um, oftentimes, it's good to have a split screen so you can see, you know, each part um, next to each other and decide what features you want to change and how you want to optimize the part. So in this example, to go to the topology optimization tab, which is an add-in, and this is using uh, Frustum software. Frustum is a company out of Colorado that um, is making this very powerful um, um, topology optimization software that um, Siemens NX has partnered with them to to bring it um, directly into NX. So in this example, um, you can manage your different load cases. You um, can pick you know what areas uh, are vital and what forces are on those. It just all depends on your application and what the part is and what features are critical. But you go through this process of identifying the different parts and identifying how you want those to come together. And then you come in here, you do the setup optimization, and now this is the Frustum software that's working in the background, and it's gonna create this um, optimized part, taking all the pieces and putting it into one. It's a little bit data intensive, so it does take a little bit of time. And then here we go, now we have the part all together. From here, there's a lot of uh, options that you have um, as far as, um, again, you can 
you can look at the stress of the part. You can validate it to make sure that you know it's going to work for your application. But then there's also quite a few features missing on this part that were on the uh, original part. So there are tools in NX where you can bring those features over, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to uh, move this along. So here we're going to convert this to a facet body. This turns it now into a convergent body that we can make modifications to. Um, of course, with convergent bodies, you can do clip section views and um, just like a, a solid body. And in this particular one, we are going to, uh, let's skip ahead. We'll see some of the features over here that we're going to want to mirror over on this optimized part. We can select those features on the original part and then we can bring those features over and add them to the topology optimized part in this convergent body. Again, this is uh, some of the powerful tools within NX using convergent bodies and being able to manipulate the facet body, the STL body um, directly in NX without having to go to a separate program, which previously would have um, you would have had to do. So here we put some of the features back in. I'm going to skip ahead. It goes and shows how to put some of these other features in the bottom, adding holes. And then, of course, there are full features uh, that allow you to uh, put radiuses and chamfers directly onto um, uh, this convergent body. If we uh, skip ahead, we'll see um, here where we're going to be selecting, um, I believe, the edge. So we're going to create a chamfer on this edge. So we'll select this edge here. We specify the point so it can actually pick the edge and know where it's um, know where the geometry is that you're trying to define. We'll skip along here. So now we're picking the edges, and it's looking at the facet body. It's finding where that edge is, and then we can create that chamfer, that angled edge, right onto the part. We can also do this on internal features. Uh, for example, here we can add a radius. Um, so we can go in and we can select points uh, on this uh, part. So we'll select our points here. And X will recognize where the edges are and start to uh, you know, give you a representation of what you're going to end up with. And you can move these around, modify it as needed till it gets to where you want it. And then you can select OK and add your radius. Again, all this directive directly native in NX, which is a very powerful and nice tool to have. So here we have uh, uh, you know, a topology optimized body. We've reduced the part count from several parts into one. And then this is something that can be 3D printed. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, just wrapping things up here. We talk about a few of the automotive uh, or applications that are out there currently. In automotive, um, 3D printing is being used for fixturing brackets, heat exchangers, engine components. Um, replacement parts, uh, legacy parts that are discontinued can be 3D printed instead of having to go re, you know, recast the parts or um, or remachine them or redesign them, as well as lightweight engineering. And as far as uh, where they're at on this um, on this adoption curve, we'll see. You can see that automotive is kind of on that slope of enlightenment, heading towards the plateau of productivity. In aerospace, they're a little bit further along. Um, aerospace is one of the earlier adopters of additive manufacturing. And so they're really getting to that plateau of productivity um, with light weighting of, of structures. Uh, this particular one that you see rotating around is um, an aerospace bracket that we put a honeycomb structure in for a customer and, and then uh, printed some samples so they could see um, how that would work. And we reduced the weight and um, but still maintain all the structural integrity of the part and again all that can be done in nx and you can uh, validate that the you know the structure of the part through simulation still meets all your criteria 
But in aerospace, brackets, oil nozzles, um, fuel bypass manifolds, mounts, fittings, airfoils, there's a lot of applications. In the medical field, uh, they are also kind of uh, almost past that slope of enlightenment, getting to that plateau of productivity for surgical implants, surgical guides, um, surgical tools, dental implants, osseo integration, custom prosthetics, and pre-operation models. And you see on this hip cup, some of those lattice structures, and those can be built again right in NX, those lattice structures that promote that bone growth and osseo integration. In the top right of the screen, um, those are parts off of our machine. Um, these are medical knee implant parts. And this is to show you that the additive manufacturing um, is really starting to take hold where in this particular plate, we have over 90 parts all being created at one time. And we can nest those in there um, and really take advantage of the process and move it away from not just prototyping, but into a, a manufacturing environment. Uh, very last, uh, I have a video that, uh, that I thought was just really great. And, you know, the tagline here is work smarter, not harder with Siemens NX. Um, some of you may have seen this. It's kind of a viral video that has gone around, but it just shows you, you know, you can use new ways to innovate and be creative. This cyclist here, um, and if you look at the bottom of his shoes, I think he has a Superman on there. So he's doing the full Superman pose. And he's passing all of his competitors along the way who haven't thought of doing this. And I think of this kind of like 3D printing where you can optimize and streamline things and uh, achieve things that you haven't been able to achieve before and move past the competition. And maybe you're not trying to move past competition. Maybe it's just internally within your business you're trying to streamline and come up with a, a better mousetrap of how to create a part, um, how to move things from, you know, design idea into actual manufacturing.